Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Math Blog. This lesson is Model Perimeter. This is uh, Lesson 11.1 in our textbook. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Let's go to that real quick. Uh, um, uh, let's see. So here's MrMathBlog.com right here. So uh, all, here's all the classes I teach. I'm a high school teacher. Uh, and then your third grade class is right there. So if you click third grade, it'll take you to all the lessons right here. So I'm going to load this in right below this one right here. I'll probably uh, load it in purple or something. I don't know. So it'll say that right below here, okay, in between these guys. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this lesson here. So our common uh, course strand is given there for our teachers and our, our question is how can we find perimeter and we're going to model it in this uh, lesson here so perimeter is just the distance around a shape we're going to be mostly dealing with rectangles but we'll have uh, another figure in here also so um, uh, we can find the perimeter of a rectangle on a geo board or dot paper uh, by counting the number of units on each side. So we're going to make a rectangle on a geo board or dot paper. If you have dot paper, you can just use your pencil and, and draw it. Uh, that's three units uh, on two sides and then two units on the other side. So here we're going to, here's our, our dot uh, paper or geo board. Now, geo boards, you usually have rubber bands right here. So we're going to go uh, three units by two units. So I think I went two across and then three down. So, so each one of these spaces is one unit. So we'll go one, two, and then one, two, three down right there. Okay. So there's one unit right there. So there's three units. So if we go two units over and then uh, it says on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and put three on the other side and two on the other side. So uh, I know it doesn't look like a perfect rectangle, but if you're drawing this like I was uh, using my drawing tools right here, it's not going to be a perfect rectangle. So anyways, we're going to find the perimeter. The perimeter is just the distance around. So if we started here, we just go around and find the perimeter right there. So we're going to add the number of units on each side. I'm at school, so it's before uh, class starts. We have a class that's called zero period here, so it's early in the morning. I do not teach zero period, so you're going to hear some bells. You'll hear another one in about four minutes. Uh, so uh, when we add those numbers right here, we're just going to add 2 plus 3 plus this 2 plus 3, okay? And I like to do this, you guys. Th this 2 and 3 is 5. This 2 and 3 is 5 more, so 5 and 5 gives us 10 right there, okay? All right, so, uh, so the perimeter of this rectangle is going to be 10 units. All right, easy enough, huh? How would the perimeter of the rectangle change if the length of the two sides was four units instead of three. So we'll take out this three right here and we'll just go down one more on each side and make it four units right here. Okay, so there we go. So the new perimeter is one more unit on each side. So it's going to be four on each side instead of three. So it's going to be giving us one more on each side or two total for the whole perimeter. And if we add it up, 2 plus 4 is uh, 6, plus another 2 plus 4 is another 6, and so 6 and 6 gives us 12. So it's two more units, which totals 12 units, okay? All right, so uh, let's see. Describe how we would find the perimeter of a rectangle that is 5 units wide and 6 units long. Okay, well, let's just do this one first here. So start by making the rectangle and labeling the sides 5 and 6. Okay, and then we can just put 5 and 6 on the opposite sides because opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. Oops, I got them in backward spots. So this is supposed to go over here, and that's supposed to go right there. Okay, and then... Um, and then we put, uh, and then we just add them up. Okay, so I got them mixed up again. God, silly me. You guys ever make mistakes? Does your math teacher ever make mistakes or your teacher? I bet he or she does. I do it all the time. My students always correct me. So uh, when we add up all four sides, we get 22 units right there. Okay, so 5 plus 6 is 11. Another 5 plus 6 is another 11. So 11 plus 11 is 22. Okay, a rectangle has two pairs of sides of equal length. So explain how we can find uh, the unknown length of two sides 
when the length of one side is 4 units and we know the perimeter is 14. Okay, so what I started doing, you guys, is I just made a rectangle. Whenever they say you have a rectangle, draw a rectangle. I tell my students, I, I can't help you unless you draw the rectangle and label stuff, okay? So they told us four of the, um, the two of the sides are four right there, so there's my four. And since we don't know these sides, I just put triangles on each side right there, okay? I, I don't know what they are. You can put squares. You don't even have to put a figure right there. Just We don't know what they are. Later, when you get into algebra, you guys, we're, we're going to put the letter X or the letter Y. But right now, it's just a question mark. So since we don't know those, uh, we'll just put question marks inside of there, okay? And then it says that the perimeter is 14. So if we just uh, add up the side, so 4 plus this question mark plus 4 plus this question mark is going to equal 14 right there, okay? So um, each question mark has to be the same because they're opposite sides of a rectangle. So whatever this side is, this side is the same right there. And since this 4 and 4 adds up to 8 right there, then these two guys got to be the rest of the 14. So, so if we take off the 8 from the 14, these two guys must add up to 6 right there. So both those rectangles add up to 6 right there. All right, let's just slide that up. I'm getting a little low right there. So, so uh, if the question marks add up to six, then and each each of the question marks is the same, then what number uh, plus itself adds to six? Well, three and three adds to six right there. So this would have to be three, and this would have to be three. And let's just check, you guys. We're going to add them up. So we get four plus three plus four plus three equals fourteen. So it does check out right there. It checks out right there. There's going to be one more bill in one minute, you guys. So, uh, and then zero period start. Zero period starts at my school at seven o'clock. All right, so here's uh, the next question here. So um, Janet says that finding the perimeter of a shape with all equal sides is easier than finding the perimeter of other shapes. Do you agree? Well, uh, um, yeah, I agree. And here's some examples right here. And so um, uh, so here we have, a, it's called an equilateral triangle, or it's just a triangle with all three sides are equal. The perimeter is 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is the same as 3 times 3, so 9 units right here. Here we have a square. The perimeter is 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, or just 4 times 5, because there's 4 5s right here. Here we have an octagon, so there's 8 sides, so 8 times 4 would give us the perimeter of this one. Okay, that's the last one right there. Okay, so 32 units right there. So, so all you got to do is, if you know that it's all equal sides, we just multiply the number of sides times the length, and then that'll give us the perimeter, okay? So let's use Janet's method to find the perimeter of a rectangle that has uh, uh, 5 units wide and 6 units long. Okay, well, Janet's going to recognize that uh, if this is 5, this is 5, so she just multiplies uh, 2 times 5, and that'll give us the 2 widths, which is 10. And then if that's 6, that's 6, so she just multiplied 2 times 6, so the top and bottom add up to 12, the left and right add up to 10, so if we add 10 and 12, uh, that would get us that 22 right there, okay? All right, so we can also use grid paper to find the perimeter of shapes by counting the number of units on each side. So if you have a, if they give you a piece, you just trace it on top of this piece of grid paper right here. So for example, um, uh, let's find the, the perimeter of this rectangle, and we can just count the grids right here. So just start at the arrow. You make the arrow wherever you want, you guys. Start at the arrow and just begin counting with one. So how many spaces are there? Here's one, two, three, so there's three spaces there. Okay, and then from here we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, so there's five spaces there, and then three spaces there, and then five spaces there. So the perimeter is gonna be 16 units right there. Okay, what if they give us a goofy figure that kinda looks like that? Well, put it on your grid paper and just trace it out, you guys, and then just start counting. So if we start at the arrow, there's one, and then going across, one, two, three, four. So there's four going across right there. So we're going to add that to the one. And then going down, there's three. And then one, and then one, and then one, and then one, and then finally that two. So the perimeter of that figure is just the sum of all of those. So if you add them all up, we get 14 units on that, okay? All right, hey, uh, if a rectangle has perimeter of 12 units, 
how many units wide and how many units long could it be? Well, if it's 12 units, you guys, it could be uh, 1 by 5 because 1 plus 5 plus 1 plus 5, or we can do what uh, Janet does, 2 times 1 and then 2 times 5. Okay, that adds up to 12. And then here, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, and 4 plus 12 adds up to 12, I'm 4 plus 8 adds up to 12. A square is actually a rectangle, you guys. So a square uh, that's 3 by 3 also has perimeter of 12. So these could be um, uh, all examples uh, that have a perimeter of 12. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. I hope you're doing well, and take care.